Hey everyone, uh, welcome to our, our weekly webinars. My name is Brennan, I'm uh, one of the co-founders at Wholesale. And uh, today I'm, I'm actually pretty excited to talk just about uh, inventory management best practices that we've seen over our tenure of working with customers that are, are managing their businesses, um, buying and selling used devices, and you know their chaos of inventory woes. Um, and I've got a, a bunch of different things, uh, kind of whether you're using Wholesale as software or not, um, to to look out for and, and things to make sure you're doing. So at that, let's let's dive right in. For uh, for folks who are completely unfamiliar with wholesale, I'd, I'd like to just you know kind of go over what wholesale does. So um, we built wholesale over the last almost five years now uh, as an inventory management system that is serialized. So it's serialized first. Other systems have serialization, so you can add the serials of the items that you're shipping to customers, and it's kind of a bolt-on solution. Wholesale is serialized from the ground up, and it's built specifically for folks that are buying and selling used mobile devices. So where wholesale is serialized, it also is unique in that it tracks the condition, um, the grade of devices, and those, those things, the conditions and the grade, are baked into all of wholesale's kind of uh, database schema and, and product catalog organization. So your SKUs in Q include, excuse me, your SKUs include condition and grade uh, as part of them, which is really unique to, to wholesale and, and something that came out of us understanding all these different conditions that can arise with used devices. Um, so wholesale is, is built around that as an inventory management system built around those concepts. It allows you to scan your IMEIs, fulfill them onto orders, audit them in your warehouse. Um, wholesale has a handful of e-commerce integrations like connections to Swappa, Backmarket, eBay, uh, Sellbrite, ShipStation to allow you to manage your e-commerce inventory and fulfill your e-commerce orders. Uh, and then we also have a handful of business integrations like one with PhoneCheck that brings in your inventory data from PhoneCheck uh, and one with QuickBooks that, that allows you to synchronize your invoices and your purchase orders with QuickBooks. So we're really building Wholesale to be the central point where you know you don't we don't want you to have to have 15 different apps where you're managing your inventory. We want you to have one place to go look for the history of your inventory, and that's Wholesale, and you can connect it to all the other systems you use um, in addition, but you're using those systems for different things. Wholesale is where you keep track of, of everything and where your team kind of spends their day managing your inventory. So that's Wholesale in, uh, in a nutshell. Um, like I mentioned, today I'm talking about reseller best practices. And so these are things that just we've seen, um, and I, I kind of like this as a series. I think we'll probably keep doing this and, and bring up different items over time. Um, but we're basically, we've seen a lot of different things that wholesalers and e-commerce sellers, retail sellers have done over the years that have kind of caused, you know, technical debt or chaos for them um, in their lives of managing their businesses. And I just want to bring up those things and talk about the solutions that we've seen people enact that have worked totally outside of wholesale. And also, you know, most of these things we have solutions for inside of wholesale as well. So um, I can talk about a little bit about each thing and, and how um, how to address it in your business. So the, the things that I've chosen to talk about today are uh, testing, grading and processing standards. Um, so those are really, really critical for anyone uh, running a device resale business. Um, labeling all devices in a in your warehouse or your office and organizing it, uh, you know, sorting your bins, sorting your inventory by it's by product and so forth. Um, keeping an active uh, stock list, basically actively updating your current stock so that your customers know what stock you have, so that you know what stock you have. Uh, tracking your financials so that you you know you know how your business is operating. That's the neurosystem of your of your business, um, and so you you know you definitely always want to know and have your finger on the pulse. Especially today, you know, back in the day, uh, folks used accounting systems and accounting departments that often took a long time to, to generate reports. But now, with most businesses running in, in software, you can do that on the fly. So knowing knowing your uh, financials like a hawk. Uh, staying on top of your RMAs, you know, RMAs have a lot of answers to for you of, of what is happening in your business. So staying on top of RMAs uh, rather than just treating them like something you have to deal with is, is really critical. Uh, and then taxes. Uh, at tax time, we, we hear from a lot of uh, customers and, and folks that are reselling devices that they're they're trying to you know, appease their accountants and they need to come up with certain reports for the accountants. Those reports are very difficult to come up with in retrospect. So coming up with them in real time and, and making sure you're doing that and setting a schedule for yourself to do that. 
So I'm going to go through each one of these in more detail and talk about our suggestions for, for those. Um, so the first one is testing, grading, and processing standards. So in, in wholesale, if you're using wholesale, we make it really easy for you to set standards for these things, to set what grades you use at your business, what conditions you use to, to measure whether a certain function of a device is working or not when your testers test it. And we've got an integration with phone check. We also have a CSV import, so you can bring in data from Ensys, Blanco, Black Belts, and, and other diagnostic service providers. But basically, in wholesale, we, we provide these standards and then allow you to import uh, data very, very simply. Uh, but whether you're using wholesale or not, you should be setting up standard operating procedures for your testers and your technicians to use the same values every time and use the same grading scale and use all of these, you know, the, your, the things that you want to establish in your business, make sure that everyone is trained and it's actually not just your testers it's also your customers so you want to train your testers on what to look for and you want to train your customers on what to expect when you say b grade or b plus grade or c grade or a minus grade what do your customers think and what do your testers think keeping that those two realities completely synchronized is incredibly critical whether again whether you're running your business on spreadsheets on some other inventory software or using wholesale it doesn't really matter if you if you don't have those things in sync you're going to have a ton of problems and you've i mean if you've been in this industry for a while you've even seen folks uh you know different organizations or have tried to come up with different standards that they're setting and descriptions of those standards and it, this industry is still kind of a wild west it's been a wild west for so long um that, that that's still a question for a lot of businesses so if you're on this call and you're just getting started as a device reseller this is an incredibly critical part of of selling used products and selling it kind of in general but especially selling used devices is get into a absolute standard and write that standard down for your technicians for yourself and for your customers um and on a spreadsheet if you're if you're tracking your inventory with a spreadsheet you can do this pretty pretty straightforwardly by having an SOP guideline, you know, having a Google Doc or something like that as a guideline with the specific, like, this is what we consider B grade, this is what we consider A grade, um, and have very, very specific details, and then have preset values that, that your testers or that you can choose from in that spreadsheet so that every time you're adding a new item to the spreadsheet, you're using the same values over and over again. So you begin to calibrate that idea over time. Um, and again, even if you're taking, if you're using spreadsheets, excuse me, you can take pictures of these items. Um, and in wholesale, again, you can set your grades and you can upload images of devices into wholesale and have kind of a library of these images of devices. So you have a sense of, of your grading standards over time. So incredibly critical to keep those things in sync and to standardize them. Uh, the next one is labeling and organizing your inventory. And I don't think I mentioned folks, uh, if anybody's got any questions, you know, this, by all means, this can be a discussion. I'm curious what, what you all have to say as well. Uh, so use the comment section and I'll read out your question if you, if you post one uh, and then we'll talk about it. Um, but this next piece is labeling and organizing your inventory kind of physically in your office. Uh, so I, you know, you want to label your inventory with a barcoded IMEI label. And again, that is something that wholesale can definitely provide. That's one of the core features of, of wholesale is having that in the software. But some of our customers do that with their diagnostic system. Some of them just do it with a free piece of uh, labeling software. There's great label printers out in the world for pretty cheap with free labeling software. So you could create these labels yourself. And boy, labels are just a really critical piece of having every item, you know, pushing items through this, I kind of talked about uh, testing and grading, but this is part of the processing. I said testing, grading, and processing. So if you have a standard workflow for processing your inventory, and you know at one point it, it arrives, maybe it has a label, maybe it doesn't from whatever vendor you purchased it from, it should go through your system and every item that's going through your system should be applied with the same label, the same standard process, so that you can see very, very visually uh, these items have labels, these items don't, these ones must have been tested by us. So that just is a very clear and easy way to organize your inventory. The second piece of this is if you, as you accrue more inventory, so if you, you know, if you're just buying and selling a few devices a day, this has not hit you yet. 
But as you move up to doing hundreds of devices a day, it's very, very critical that you organize all the devices that are in your inventory. Um, and you, you'll probably want to use some kind of bin system, a shelving system like shelves and bins, and even maybe a sorting system within the bins. And so we recommend, especially because a lot of e-commerce sellers and, and B2B folks have some kind of listing or, or a, listings on a sales channel or listings on a B2B marketplace as a way that they're selling inventory, those listings are almost always tied to SKUs. So it makes a lot of sense, stands to reason, that you would use SKUs on your bins to separate your inventory. And for serialized inventory, it might even make more sense uh, to, well, not more sense, but to continue past SKUs and then have separations in your bins to sort the, you know, you've got all of your SKUs, of the, uh, items of the same SKU are in a bin, and then you sort inside of that bin. If your bins have May, you know, a couple hundred items, you might want to subsort in that bin by the date that you added the inventory, by the unique ID. Wholesale creates a unique ID for every single uh, inventory item. So some of our customers will sort them by that ID in their, their SKU bins. Um, or you can sort them by, you know, if you've, they've got a timestamp on them, if you're putting a timestamp in your spreadsheet, for example, you could put a column um, in your spreadsheet that has a, um, a timestamp in it. And then you could sort these, you could put the timestamp on the label of the device. If this, okay, this is when the device entered our system and then put it on that. And, and then you have, you know, you can go back to your spreadsheet, see when you put it in, and you should obviously have a location in the column. So you should have a SKU column uh, in your spreadsheet if you're tracking your inventory on spreadsheets. Wholesale does, you know, I don't have to say wholesale does this all for you um, uh, and allows, you know, gives you dedicated places to keep track of this information. We've got labels, we have locations, physical locations um, and physical warehouses stored in wholesale on your inventory. But if you're doing this on spreadsheets, you still can do it and you should create columns for these and you should be incredibly disciplined about making sure you're always maintaining those values and keeping them up to date. So that is uh, labeling and organizing inventory. The next bit is uh, keeping your stock lists up to date. So if you you know if you can't tell by now, we're following the rubric that I set in that initial slide. Um, and so this is you know this is really really critical for folks that are selling a lot of wholesale. Is you send out some kind of of B two B sales list that has your inventory available, the quantities of inventory that you have, and you've got people. You know over time you'll accrue more and more people that are coming to this page, whether it's a hosted Google Sheet, like a live Google Sheet, or some other kind of, of web page with your current inventory, eventually you'll have people coming and visiting that page and making decisions of what to offer on and you know maybe even making their own inventory decisions thinking, ah, I can resell that inventory. And you want them to be able to do that. That's, that's a, a powerful thing for your business. But to do that well, you need to have your whatever source they're coming to. It's a website or a Google Sheet or a wholesale B2B portal um, or a wholesale hosted uh, public inventory page. Whatever it is, it needs to be up to date. And this is something that, you know, wholesale provides these tools, but it's still on you to keep your inventory up to date. And so whether you're using a spreadsheet, whether you're using wholesale, you need to make sure you're, you're ma maintaining the same standard process. That's what I said here is create a standard process for sales to keep the updated quantity of your inventory constantly live on the place that you're advertising it. So whatever that looks like, you know, if you're say, if you've got a sales team and they're taking in orders, maybe they should be creating draft orders that pulls the inventory out of, of the current available status. Um, you know, that's, that's a pretty critical thing in wholesale. We do that for you. If you add inventory to an order, it gets pulled out of the, it gets set to a different status, a sold status, and it gets pulled out of the listings that you have on your e-commerce channels, the listings that you have in your B2B customer portal. It gets pulled out of any inventory reports that you're sharing publicly. So wholesale, you know, is built around this concept and has a lot of tools to help people do this, but it, it still needs you to go through and manage the, the you know, what, however you're selling inventory or removing it, however you want to remove it from your current available stockpile, you still need to be doing that. Um, and so you need to do it whether you're using wholesale, spreadsheets, or some, some other software. Um, if you're not using wholesale, one bullet I put in here is it's, you know, if you're selling a lot of e-commerce, it's very helpful to use an e-commerce listing management service, a uh, multi-channel management service like Sellbrite um, for ma managing and maintaining all of your various e-commerce listings and the, the current quantities that are, are listed on those platforms. And so it's really, really helpful. There's a bunch of different multi-channel management tools. Wholesale is, is uh, 
actively competing with these tools and trying to become better. And what wholesale does unique to those is many of these tools just allow you to set quantity and you can say, okay, I want four. Um, I, I've added four today, so I'm putting in four. Wholesale allows you to input your inventory. It's more of an inventory management system that has these integrations with e-commerce channels built on top of it. So your team, your operations team can go through and be managing the inventory, repairing phones, testing phones with phone check, um, adding new inventory, uh, segmenting other inventory to go to a wholesale buyer or something like that. And then wholesale allows you to scope what inventory you want to make available on your e-commerce channels. And that's what we believe Wholesale does way better than these other multi-channel softwares like Sellbrite. Um, but we have an integration with Sellbrite so that you can connect your inventory to all the different channels that Sellbrite syncs with. And we're constantly building more and more e-commerce integrations to, to connect Wholesale directly to the channels that you sell on. So you know whether you're using Wholesale or spreadsheets or another inventory system, if you're selling a lot on e-commerce, it behooves you to have some kind of listing management tool. So you have, so whoever's managing your e-commerce has one place to go to be able to set the quantities. So that if you know if you sell a bunch of stuff uh, wholesale or B two B, then you have the ability to just go to one place and update the quantities to what they are there now, um, the what the active current uh, quantity is, so that you don't oversell. Because as everyone knows, all of the e-commerce channels that you sell on have huge uh, penalties for overselling and not being able to deliver an item to a customer. None of these channels want their sellers to, to you know, overpromise and underdeliver, and so they penalize for that. And so all of these pieces of software are built around preventing you from overselling. Um, and you know, I, this is kind of intuitive, I think, but if you're on spreadsheets, use one live sheet one live place to keep your active inventory so that you know it's it, it's only one place to manage it some people we see creating multiple sheets and in wholesale you can actually create multiple inventory reports that have different filters so you could have a damaged stock report you could have a a fully functional stock report. You could have an Apple stock report or a Samsung stock report and, and then filter those items um, for specific customers. But the nice thing about wholesale is it's keeping all of those places constantly updated. So you're not having to rush around and manually update everything. If you're on spreadsheets and you are manually updating things, just make your life simple. Keep one sheet updated and commit to keeping that one sheet updated so you're not running around and, uh, and trying to update all these other places, getting orders for stock that you, you know, from B2B customers that you don't have anymore because you forgot to update the list. That's that's a, a rookie mistake, but it happens so often it's it's got to be in here. So keep your stock lists up to date. That's, that's my advice. Um, track every critical financial metric. I can't stress this enough. If you do not know the finances of your business, you cannot run your business. You cannot budget for hiring more employees. You cannot budget for a different, a bigger office or a different, you know, different equipment that you need to run your business. And you have no idea how well you're doing. Just knowing that you're profitable is not enough. You need to know, you know, businesses that know how they're doing on each customer, with each customer, how what their lifetime um, profit is per customer, per vendor, per product, and per transaction or per item they buy. Those those companies can continually monitor and improve what they're doing based on that data. And the ones who don't have that data can't. So there is, you know, it might look like two companies are, are similar, but the ones that have this data, that have this ability to look at their data and make executive decisions, oh, we're, we're losing money consistently working with this vendor. Even though they've got great auctions, we're winning lots of inventory from them. Every time we make a purchase from them, we are where our margin is pathetic and we're not able to to actually compete it's bringing down our business so you stop buying from that vendor having insight into that that reality is very critical and for some businesses this can be confusing because you know if you're if you're smaller you might just be buying from a couple of vendors so it's very easy to track that visually or you know you think that it's it, you're tracking it and you're like i'm i'm tracking that it's no no problem but the reality is as you grow this becomes much more challenging you're buying from many different vendors you're buying all kinds of different products and it's very very difficult to keep a hold on this so as you scale these these are problems that really impact you at scale um, and it's and it's critical anything that you were going to want to track at scale you have to track at the beginning at uh, at small at, at a small scale and a small stage. So, 
anyways, in my opinion, uh, gross margin, gross profit. Um, I, I said margin twice here. I'm not sure why, but um, but gross margin and gross profit are the really critical uh, things to track. And maybe where I put margin ROI is, is what I mean. Is so when you spend X dollars on inventory, how much are you getting back? And so um, you can track that with margin, but ROI is another way to look at it that that works very well. And tracking them per you know per object per item per deal per vendor and per customer is just incredibly critical uh, to the success and to the future of your business at the beginning you know it's critical just to make sure you're making profit and that you're going to be able to live in the long term it's very important that you make good decisions about who to work with what to sell and um, who to, to purchase phones from who to sell them from you might have a customer that's doing a bunch of RMAs and ultimately at the beginning, it looks like they're doing well um, and you're performing well on, on what you sell to them. But after a while, it's just, it's not working. They're getting tons of RMAs, but unless you're tracking that, those financial metrics, you're not gonna know. So um, I also put in here, make sure to include all expenses. If you're selling a lot on e-commerce, boy, those e-commerce fees from the different uh, marketplace channels, they really impact your, your bottom line. They really impact the profit that you're able to take away per item at the end of the day. And you want to know, after all of those fees are paid, the shipping fee, the final value fee for the channel, the PayPal fees or whatever other payment fees with whatever payment processor you're using, after all those fees are taken out, how much did you make on the device? You bought a device for 100 bucks. Maybe you sold it for 150, which is great. A $50 uh, profit on a $100 purchase is, is a great um, profit. $50 on a $150 sale is a 33%. It's a third, 50 out of 150 is a 33% gross margin, but that's just gross for one. You haven't in included your employee's time processing the device, all of your, you know, your um, other net costs, your, your operating expenses, your rent, all of those other parts of your business. So that's just gross for one. Um, and you're also not necessarily including in that, in that uh, if you sold at e-commerce, what are all the fees that were included in that? And so wholesale gives you a place to put these fees. It allows you to track all of your per item financials. So you can see how did you actually do on a particular item? And uh, we're really proud of that. That's, that's a critical, it's like measuring the neuro system of your, your business. And uh, you can do that in a serialized way with wholesale. But even if you're not using wholesale, do that in your spreadsheet. Include all of your expenses, add columns for the, the various expenses that you incur in your spreadsheets um, and track them religiously so that you know how to make decisions, how to move forward um, on, and, and say no to certain things and, and yes to others. So track those financials. Organize your RMAs. Again, you know, at the beginning, RMAs can seem like just a hassle that is an operational thing that needs to be managed, um, where you're needing to, to track your RMAs and, and make sure that you're receiving them from customers and that you're refunding customers that need to get refunded. All of that tracking is very, very important, obviously, because you don't want to let anything slip through the cracks. But keeping them organized means you can also track the financial impact from them and the kind of the... Um, the constant uh, insight that you can you can garner from them about what problems your team is making from an ops perspective, and so you know we we see this becoming more and more prevalent as time goes on. That customers want to track why are their why are uh, are like wholesale customers people device resellers want to track why are their customers returning devices? Is it for consistent reasons? You know, plenty of e-commerce customers I'm sure are, are returning devices because of buyer's remorse. They decide they don't want it. They bought it for the wrong carrier. That stuff is out of your control. But if a lot of customers are returning devices because they're finding tiny little hairline cracks in the screens or in the rear glass, that's your problem. And you want to be able to manage that in a way that allows you to see what are these reasons for returns that I'm getting over time? What devices in particular? Do I have any kind of pattern between am I getting a lot of uh, particular models returned? Um, and how are these RMAs, the ship, I'm paying for shipping, I'm paying for the team's time and managing the RMA. How are those RMAs impacting your, your bottom line? And so you want to be able to see these things uh, really critically in your view of, uh, of how your company is doing. And so Again, Wholesale has a, an entire portal for you to manage customer RMAs. We have a workflow, we don't have a portal, but we have a workflow for managing vendor RMAs. And because of all of Wholesale's places for tracking financials, you have the ability to 
include the financials of uh, the financial impact of RMAs if you want to. It's certainly work for our our sellers, our customers to to manage and track those things. But again, these are best practices. These are the sophisticated ways that if if someone is running a business and keeping tabs on all of their financial impacts that uh, that impact their inventory and to make better decisions, they're tracking these things. So, um, you know, the three things that I said here were track the recurring problems uh, and use if you're if you're on spreadsheets, just use a consistent reason. Just have a an array of different reasons and set the reasons so that your processing team, they have to choose a consistent reason and then come up with a pivot table in your spreadsheet at some point and track the reasons last month that you had devices returned. It's it's work, but it's you know, it's straightforward. You can you can certainly do that. Um, keep tabs on the financial impact that RMAs have to your bottom line and to the, you know, track your RMAs by your by customer. Go into wholesale and search for how many RMAs you've received from a particular customer, what their RMA rate is. Keep tabs on those on those metrics, those critical metrics from RMAs. Um, and then use RMAs as a managerial tool to train your testers and your technicians. Use the, you know, if, if one particular technician keeps having a problem with that hairline crack on the back or the front of the phones that they're testing, or they're missing that the camera lens has a crack through it, or some other esoteric issue. I mean, you know, at this point, all of these electronics have many, many things that can go wrong. And to ensure that you're doing a good job and a consistent job over time, you need to listen to the answers that your RMAs are, are giving you. RMAs are filled with answers to, um, to you know, what's going on in your business and you need to listen to them. So keeping them organized is the critical first step in doing that. And this is my last one. I, I know this one is long winded, but I actually really enjoy sharing these with you guys. I hope you enjoy them as well. The last piece that I have to share is recording inventory value for taxes. At the end of each uh, each year, basically, and, and around tax time in the United States, we hear from a lot of our customers and they say, can I please go back and create an inventory report um, to find my tax, like how much inventory value I had on December 31st at the end of the year, because my tax accountant is saying I need a, um, a book value for my inventory for the end of the fiscal year. And we say, sorry, you can't do that. We don't track the inventory value that you have in wholesale every single day, but you can go in and do that at any interval, or, but not at any interval, but at any point that you want to. So wholesale gives you the tools to track your live inventory value. And what you need to do then is be disciplined about at every interval that your, your accountant wants you to correct the inventory value in your books, you can go into wholesale and you can go into your financial analytics uh, and your inventory analytics page in wholesale and look at all the current statuses of inventory, whether, you know, all the current ones, meaning that they're, they're owned by you, you've paid for this inventory, you check all of those off and wholesale will give you that current paid value for the inventory. Um, and you want to just get that. You want to go into wholesale or have someone in your team or your accountant go into wholesale and get that value plus any other inventory that you're storing that's not recorded in wholesale. Sum that all up and then keep that as a, as a running value and, and get it whenever you need to to make that book adjustment. If you're not using wholesale, use spreadsheets. Use spreadsheets to track the current stock paid value um, for, for all the inventory that you have in your business. It's like a very, very simple thing at, at its essence, but so many small business owners and especially you know resellers that we encounter forget to do this and then are left kicking themselves. And you know it's just one of those things. It's like it's a slippery slope. At one point they're like, ah, I'll I'll assume how much inventory value I had, and uh, don't worry, I'm not selling the business tomorrow. It's not gonna it's not gonna matter. I'll make sure I get it right in the future. If you get it right in the future, then that made the difference. But if you don't, if you keep if you keep making that mistake, uh, it makes it harder and harder to do bigger things with your business. It makes it harder to go borrow capital. It makes it harder to sell your business in the future if you want. It makes it harder to report to the IRS for tax purposes um, or whatever your your federal uh, government is, um, government agency that manages taxes wherever you're living. Um, so we've got customers all over the world. This is a challenge for all of them. So use to the tools in wholesale at the times that you need to, the inventory reports in wholesale or in your spreadsheets to grab your current value of inventory and just keep it recorded somewhere. That that will save you and your account so much hassle and so much time. And uh, I can't recommend this enough. Set a reminder for yourself to do it at the end of every month or quarterly, um, and you will you will have a much, much simpler time uh, pr preparing your taxes for the end of the year. So that is our last best practice for today. Um,
thank you all for, for coming. We've had a few people even join since I started chatting. Um, you know, if you're interested, if you're not a wholesale customer right now, you can go sign up for a trial. Uh, and if you do, let us know that you joined uh, one of our webinars and we'll, we'll chat with you about it and we'll add a little bit more time to your trial as a thank you for, for coming in um, and spending time with us. Um, if anybody's got any questions, this is the live Q&A. I'd be happy to take them. Um, so toss them in the chat. If so, I'll read them out. Uh, but if we don't have any questions, I will say sayonara and uh, send you all out to have a great weekend. All right. It looks like uh, no questions so far. So, yeah, Evan, thanks so much. Thanks for the time. Take care, everyone. Have a great weekend, and we'll uh, see you in the next one of these.